Hello and welcome to Morningstar. I'm Emma Wallen and joining me today to give his three stock picks is Francesco Conte, manager of the JP Morgan European Smaller Companies Trust. Hello, Francesco. Good morning. So what is the first stock you'd like to highlight today? Well, the first one is Remy Cointreau. Um, it's a French spirits company. Um, what I think people don't quite appreciate is that it's not really a spirits company, but it is increasingly becoming a luxury goods company. The CEO came from Louis Vuitton a couple of years ago, and when she joined the company, she was talking to one of the senior managers, and he started talking about cases. And she said, what's a case? And he said, well, that's what we do. We sell cases of spirits. And she said, no, we don't sell cases of spirits. We sell a luxury product. And so if you Google, um, for example, Remy uh, Black Pearl, you'll see that some of their bottles go for ten, twenty thousand dollars They've even auctioned off one bottle at $95,000. So, whereas people might look at it and say this is expensive compared to, uh, I don't know, a Pernod Ricard, it's really very, very unique in the industry because there are not many bottles that people can sell for $20,000. So a, a very, very special company. And the economy is robust enough to support luxury goods because it is one of the sectors where in a downturn, it does get hit, doesn't it? Well, so cognac sales, uh, the, the biggest market for cognac is the United States, which has continued to grow very, very quickly. I mean, 20 odd percent. Um, China had become a very important market for them, but it fell sharply for about three years um, and then started recovering sometime um, early last year. Um, and Europe is starting to recover as well. So one of, the fun one of the curious things about Remy is that normally these luxury goods companies grow very quickly when they actually go down market, you know, selling key rings, so to speak. What well, they've actually been growing very quickly by going up market, so they've been actually cutting the bottom uh, brand because there's only so many grapes that they have available, and so why sell them for 40 euros a bottle when you can sell them for 60 euros a bottle at the low end? And what is the second stock today? The second stock is Ubisoft. Um, it is also a French company. Um, very unique. Started, I think, when he was uh, the, when the founder was uh, was a very young man. Um, in those days, it, it was you know a real kind of you do it in your bedroom kind of thing. Computer games. Uh, computer games, video games. Uh, they're the third largest in Europe. Uh, sorry, third largest in the world, largest in Europe. Um, they have huge titles such as Assassin's Creed, um, uh, Far Cry, um, etc. And um, Today, it's an extraordinary industry because each game costs more or less $200 million, say $100 million to develop in terms of software, another 100 or so to market. So the number of companies that can really put that kind of money on the table, Have that there's only four uh, around the world. Um, and so the market has been consolidating, not through M&A, but really through, through, through the fact that uh, companies can't afford these things, or the, the development. Um, but these games, I, and I see it with my son, you know, I'll see him wearing headsets and I say, you know, what are you doing? And he says, I'm playing with my friend uh, in Canada. And oh, I didn't know you had a friend in Canada. Oh, we've been playing for a few weeks now. And, you know, so they're communities. You know, in the old days, you buy a disc and you would, I think, on average, play 25, 30 hours and get, get bored. Now, because they're communities, because people are playing online, they never get bored of the game because it changes all the time. And so, the, uh, uh, obviously, the, the ability for a Ubisoft to make additional margin out of the customer by selling him an extra, whatever it may be, uh, an extra gun or an extra outfit um, it, it, it is, is enormous. Um, and bear in mind that now, because it's online, the company knows where you're going and they can encourage you they can encourage you to go to a different part where you will find that thing that you're more likely to buy so it, it's a fantastic business um, where the margins are going up very quickly uh, probably faster than sales and, um, and where they are brilliantly positioned because they are in terms of open world games they are actually the leaders in the world and what's the third and final stock? The third and final stock is, you know, one of the things that people always criticise Europe for is ageing, you know, and, um, and Italy is the worst uh, or the most ageing country in Europe, along with Japan, uh, the second most ageing country in the world. But it does throw up opportunities, of course, and so the largest hearing aid retailer in the world is an Italian company 
called Amplifon uh, that um, is leader in Europe, in the US and Australia. Um, this business is not an emerging market business. It's, uh, the, these hearing aids are too expensive, uh, costing very often thousands of dollars. Um, and the beauty of this business model is that as we're growing older, they, they in any case, um, growing at about 7% a year. They generate a lot of free cash flow because they don't own the buildings, they only rent the buildings. Uh, and with that free cash flow, they make additional acquisitions. So they typically they grow more than 10% a year. Now the curious thing when we look forward is that their average customer is 72 years old. So if you go back to 1946, when the baby boom started and add 72, you get to 2018. So there are not many companies where theoretically, pretty visibly, growth should actually be accelerating. And of course, the baby boomer didn't last one year, two years, or it lasted 15, 20 years. So you could have uh, an incredibly accelerating top line for this company over the next few years. Um, and I see very little to stop them. Moreover, there's no technological risk uh, because they buy the hearing aids from three suppliers, global suppliers, um, and they pay a massive discount compared to the little shop around the corner. So uh, I don't see much technological risk. Um, I don't see much competitive risk. Um, it, it's really a, a fabulous company. Francesco, thank you very much. Not at all. Thank you. This is Emma Wolf for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.